We're coming up to mini roundabout soon, and on approach to the mini roundabout, the speed limit is changing to 20 miles per hour. At the mini roundabout, we're going to be turning right. So middle mirror, right mirror, signal right, slowing down because we can't see to the right too well. There is a vehicle on the right, but they're turning left, so it's safe to go. As we come round, we've got a pedestrian crossing, a zebra crossing. It appears to be clear, no one looking to cross. And at the roundabout, we're following the road ahead. Notice, as we exit the roundabout, there's no speed limit changes. So it's still 20 miles per hour. This is because we're going past a school. The candidate builds their speed and they go up to 26 miles per hour on a 20 mile an hour road. This is given as a serious fault for use of speed. If we carry on further down the road, we can see when the speed limit changes. So it's still 20. Here's the speed limit change to 30 after we've passed the school. So as soon as we pass this sign, about now, now the speed limit's 30. So now we can go beyond 20 miles an hour if it's safe to do so. As we proceed down the road, we can see a stopped bus in the road. And we need to anticipate this could move off. As if it does, we need to give way to it. The driver doesn't anticipate this. And the bus indicates to pull away and the driver just continues to overtake them. This is given as a serious fault. We need to give way to the bus. Let's look back at that and consider what we could do differently. When approaching a bus, it's like approaching a green traffic light. You need to anticipate the situation could change and be prepared to stop and give way. To help anticipate when it's going to move off, check to see if there's any passengers getting on or off on the left side of the bus, like shown here. Also notice the left signal gets cancelled, so this bus is going to move off at any moment. So at this point we need to be slowing down and watching for a right signal. If a right signal comes on, we need to stop and give way to the bus if it's safe to do so. As the bus driver was expecting us to give way, he starts to move. And now we're in a dangerous situation of overtaking a moving vehicle on a bend. And we cause the oncoming black car to stop. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a free in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions, common driving test faults, driving test general tips, and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally, it has tips for after you've passed your test, including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video. We're on the same stretch of road here on a different test. So remember here, it's 20 miles per hour. This driver sticks to the speed limit really well, keeping at 20 until they see the 30 mile an hour signs, or should I say until they pass the 30 mile an hour signs. So doing really well here, still 20 at the moment, still 20, now it's 30. But then they, they speed up too much towards a parked vehicle and they don't then steer around it enough. And the bit of jerky action you might have seen there was the examiner taking action to stop the driver from hitting the parked vehicle. This is given as a serious fault for steering. Let's have a final look at that. We can see the road is fairly narrow due to the oncoming vehicle and the parked vehicle. So the driver needs to slow down here to give them more control of the steering to move through the situation safely. The candidate is driving down this road with a bus in the bus lane just to the left of them. As they approach some traffic lights, the bus slows down and the driver continues to accelerate past them as if to overtake them. The examiner then needs to step in and say, stop, as the bus is about to come across and it's going to be too narrow to fit through with the bus and if we would have carried on through, we would have got hit by the bus. Here is what we should do differently. When you have large vehicles like buses and lorries, 
we should keep further back from them and give them plenty of space, as they might change their position when they're turning or proceeding on narrow roads. We also need to notice the bus was indicating right here. They are indicating right here as they need to tell us they need to come over to our lane to fit through the traffic lights as it's quite narrow. We should respond to that right indicator by holding back and giving way to the bus. The candidate has been asked to exit the dual carriageway. They exit well, having a decent speed, and they've cancelled their left signal after exiting, and now they're starting to slow. At the end of the road, they're going to be turning right. See if you can notice the serious fault. Did you notice it? The candidate's position was incorrect for turning right at that junction. Let's have a look back at that. So remember, we're on a dual carriageway at the moment and we just exited. As we exit, there's no road signs telling us that this is a two-way road. So this is a one-way road. We're not going to have traffic coming towards us going the wrong way on the dual carriageway. And because we're on a one-way road, we need to position over to the right, fully over to the right, like shown here. We can get confirmation we're on a one-way road by looking at the road markings. Notice there's a double dashed lines going across the whole junction. The double dashed lines are the give way lines. Also notice it says no entry written upside down at the junction, meaning no traffic is allowed to come in, so you're on a one way road. To clarify, this is what the road markings look like on a two way road. And this is what they look like on a one-way road. Hopefully you can see the difference.